Good morning, Cross Point Church. We are so glad that you've chosen to join us online this morning. My name is Jesse. I'm one of the pastors here. We are excited about starting a new series today, and we're glad that you're here. A couple things. If you could let us know in the comment section below that you're here, just give us thumbs up, say good morning. You can talk to each other too, but we would love to communicate with you that way. Um, we would like for you to be prayerful during the service today. Worship with us at home like you normally would. You can sing right there in your living room. That's okay to do. Take notes. We're excited about Chris's new series called 40 that's starting this week. So thank you for joining us, and uh, enjoy worship this morning. Hey, Crosspoint Church, man, we are so glad you're joining us. Sing along at home, you and your PJs, you're hanging out, so enjoy yourself. With open hearts and lifted hands. Doing all that. 
Maybe some of you is just now eating some breakfast. Eat a piece of liver mush for me if you're eating. But you know, through all of this, through everything that's going on, everything that's happening, I want you to know that despite all the stresses, all the worries, that we are forgiven by the love and grace of God. you're just joining us and uh, weren't here when I did the welcome just a few minutes ago. Thank you so much for being with us. My name is Jesse. I'm one of the pastors here. Thanks for worshiping with us. Jeff, thanks for leading us in worship this morning. We are excited today 
because we're beginning a new series called 40 today. It's going to be a great series. A couple things I want to let you know. Uh, one, we're preparing to give in just a moment, and there's several ways that you can do that. Before I talk about that, I want to let you know that we have some cool stuff coming uh, for your students. If you have a middle school or a high school student and you have not been included on the invitations to uh, join us for Zoom meetings, we played a little Zoom bingo, and if you weren't there, I'm just telling you, it was a lot of fun. We're going to do some other cool things. We had a, a Zoom communion service last week also. We want your student to be a part of that, uh, so please let me know. You can comment in the section below. Uh, we'll be glad to get with you that way. You can also also send me an email directly. Now, as you guys prepare to give, we want to let you know that there are several ways you can do that. You can do that through the website right now. You can also you text to 77977. It'll shoot you a little link real quick, and you can follow that link. It's super simple. You can also mail it to the address that you can find on the website or right here below me right now or you can drop it by the office just let me know i'd be happy to meet you there um, i know things have been a little weird for everybody we keep saying that but it's kind of true right i miss seeing your faces it's different you not being in the room while we're having this discussion right now this morning um things kind of shaky it seems like a little bit upside down our world is and i read the scripture and it was a great encouragement to me this week and i want to read it to you as you guys prepare to give this morning. Here's what it says in Psalm 93. It says, The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. It says, The Lord is robed and He has put strength as His belt. And here's what it says. It says, The world is established and it shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old and you are from everlasting. And the floods have lifted up, O oh Lord, their vo the floods have lifted up their voice, and the floods lift up their roaring. And it's mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the ways of the sea. It feels like we're in a flood lately, right? It's stormy. We don't know what's happening. But in the midst of all the flood and all the noise, here's what it says. It says, the Lord on high is mighty. He's bigger than the, it's just noise to him. Your decrees are very trustworthy, Lord. Holiness befits your house. Oh, Lord, you are forever more. Amen to that. You guys bow your heads, if you would. Pray along with me. God, there's such comfort in the midst of troublesome, uncertain times that you are from everlasting, just like the word said, that you are on the throne you cannot be moved and the storm can come and it can rage against us but you are stable and you are secure and you're still in control and you're not caught by surprise and you still love your children you still take care of your children you're a provider you're a father you're a God you are holy and we acknowledge that you are everlasting we're grateful for that thank you for your word and the truth Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Cross Point Church. Excited to be here this morning. Hope you are and excited about this new series we're starting called 40. And if you are just joining us, welcome to Cross Point Church. We uh, hope that you will enjoy this series. God's really got something great for us in this. And I want to just tell you some interesting things, some updates before we get started this morning about our building and where we're going to be meeting in the future, uh, very, very near future. As soon as all this kind of lets up on us, we're going to uh, be getting to meet here and have service here. I just want to share with you some, some great things going on. Um, the children's building, uh, Angie and Chris have been working really hard on getting that ready. There's been uh, carpet clean. There's been tons of painting, and uh, the countertops have been redone. The cabinets have been painted. There's new equipment. There's new furniture. Uh, it's going to be great. Volunteers are not going to have to set that up and tear that down every week. That's going to be amazing. Also, in our worship center, uh, in the old gym, the basketball goals are down. Uh, the walls have been painted, the ceiling has been sprayed, uh, so it's blacked out and it looks really nice and uh, the lights have been ordered and hopefully going to be here soon and be installed very shortly. Uh, the carpet's already here, it's in a warehouse just waiting on the lights and the lift to get out of there. 
Uh, electricity has been had some work done on it so our sound system can run and uh, getting a stage ready to be built and uh, lots of great things going on. So we're excited about what's going on there. Uh, the new chairs will be here. Sorry if you were thinking we might use the teal Charlotte Hornets chairs we had before. They have actually been retired, so there you go. They're in the Hall of Fame somewhere, or Hall of Shame, if you helped get the gum off of those when we first planted the church. But anyway, those are great things that are going on, and uh, we're just excited about what God is doing in the midst of a mess. And, and would you say that, or, or would you say we are in the midst of a mess? I would say that, um, because it's just so much, and, and you're just glued to the news and glued to the stuff, and... You know, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, you can lay your phone down. You can leave the TV off. You can socially distance. You can do those things we're supposed to do. But you can enjoy just being at home and being with family and, and just enjoying being outside. I know last night I was uh, down and just had to uh, burn some, some limbs and stuff. And just down at the fire pit, I just stopped and thought, man, this is so nice. Just stop. Be still long enough to know that he is God. And sometimes we miss that. Sometimes we miss that. We're just so rushing around. So that's what we're going to talk about uh, in this upcoming series called 40. Now, this is not uh, just, oh, man, 40. I wonder if he's going to talk about when you turn 40. Oh, man, you turn 40. Yeah. Well, turning 40 is not that bad because I remember that, and I've turned 40, so uh, just barely passed it. Uh, some odd decade and a half or so. But anyway, some interesting 40 facts. Interesting 40 facts. Do you know that 40 is the only number that when you spell it, the letters are in alphabetical order? Some of you right now are going, wait a minute. 40 is also the only number that at minus 40 degrees is the same in Fahrenheit and in Celsius. Check that out. Also, WD-40. Who has WD-40? Raise your hand if you have some WD-40. If you use WD-40, you know what it's good for, right? It stands for Water Displacement 40th Formula. It took them 40 tries to get WD-40 right. So that's pretty pretty uh, slick name, huh? WD-40, Water Displacement 40th Yeah. All right, so here's another thing. In the Middle Ages, during the bubonic plague, ships who were out and needing to come ashore had to stay in the harbor for 40 days before they could come ashore. And the Italian word for 40 is quaranta, thus the word quarantine, which hits us where we are today. And so I would share with you this morning that uh, the Webster's definition of quarantine is this, a period of 40 days, a restraint of activities designed to prevent the spread of disease or pests. So there you go, quarantine. And I want you to know that 40 days, there's a lot of things in 40 in the Bible, 40 days, 40 nights, 40 years, there's a lot of things that have 40 in them in the Bible. And in the Bible, 40 days in the Bible means 40 days. That's what that means, 40 days, right? So we're going to be talking about this time that we're quarantined or we're supposed to stay at home, we're supposed to be doing our own thing and, and socially distancing and all these new things. Listen, these are things that are new for us, but what will you do with this. What will you do with this time? 40 days seems to be, uh, the number 40 seems to be something that uh, Bible scholars agree on and you, without getting too deeply into it. And well, what does it actually mean? And is it uh, numerology? Is it for, uh, foreshadowing? Is it telling something about the future? Listen, here's what they agree on. In the Bible, when you see 40, you see that it is a time of usually testing or trial or probation or seeing how something goes for a while. And so that's what we're going to be looking at. In this time that we're looking at this morning, the earth had become very evil and violent. 
and probably a very familiar story to you. But the lifespan, you know, we read in the Old Testament, the beginning in Genesis, that people were living to be four, five, six hundred years, seven hundred years, nine hundred years. But we see in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, God says, My spirit will not put up with humans for much, such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. So 120 years it is. You see, everything they thought, everything they imagined, everything they were about had become evil and wicked. And God said, in other words, my spirit will no longer be in them if they're going to be so evil and so wicked. And it broke God's heart. It broke God's heart. And so he said, that's it. His long suffering, as we talked about last week, had come to an end. And we see in chapter 6, verse 5 in the book of Genesis, the Lord observed the extent of human, wicked, human wickedness on the earth. And he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth, and it broke his heart. And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them. He said, I'm going to wipe out this human race and that's it. I've had it. I'm done can't believe they would act this way after I put them in such a great place and now this. But verse 8, but Noah found favor with the Lord. But Noah found favor with the Lord. You see, I love it in the Bible when there's something going on and it says, but God. See, Noah found favor with the Lord, so, but God noticed, in other words, Noah and his life. Noah was righteous and blameless. He walked in close fellowship with the Lord. He was righteous and blameless. Was he perfect? No. But he had a close relationship with the Lord, and he walked with the Lord, and he said, Lord, I don't know either. All this stuff going on around us, man, it's crazy. But I am going to be in fellowship with you. I am going to follow you. I'm going to walk closely with you. Sound familiar with all this craziness going on in our world? Lord, I want to follow you. I want to be with you. I want to be a ray of hope to all of these who are still not getting it. Noah found favor with the Lord. And he was righteous and blameless. And notice this. God gives us detailed instruction. So to Noah, he says, hey, I am going to be destroying the earth. I'm going to be taking care of all this evil. I'm wiping all of this out. But here's what I want you to do. And he gave him the specifics on building the ark. He gave him the specifics on building this giant boat. He gave him the specifics on what to do. And how to do it. And we see in verse 22 of chapter 6, the last verse. So Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. Exactly as God had commanded him. He found favor with God. And then he did exactly what God led him to do. Have you ever been at a place where you have said, I think God wants me to do this. And I go, mm, I'm not so sure, Lord. I really don't think that's it. Maybe that's not you. Maybe that's just me thinking to myself, I, I don't really want. No, Noah did exactly what God commanded him. Exactly. And favor is found in fellowship and faithfulness. Favor is found in fellowship 
and faithfulness. You want God's favor? You're not going to get it by following or looking at someone that says, hey, you can have favor from God. You can be rich tomorrow. All you got to do is, yeah, that's not it. Favor is found in fellowship with the Lord and faithfulness to the Lord. That's, that's where you get favor. If you have your Bibles this morning or your phone, we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 7 and Genesis chapter 8. We're going to read through both of these chapters. I want to make sure that you get this. I want to make sure that you get the the full uh, story here. And so here we go. We're going to be pulling out several points uh, of what happened here. It says, when everything was ready, chapter 7, verse 1, the Lord said to Noah, go into the boat with all your family For among all the people of the earth, I can see that you alone are righteous. Take with you seven pairs, male and female, of each animal I have approved for eating and for sacrifice. And take one pair of each of the others. Also take seven pairs of every kind of bird. There must be a male and a female in each pair to ensure that all life will survive on the earth after the flood. Seven days from now, I will make the rains pour down on the earth, and it will rain for 40 days and 40 nights until I have wiped from the earth all the living things I have created. Very important, verse 5. So Noah did everything as the Lord commanded him. Are you seeing a pattern here? He found favor with the Lord because he did what the Lord asked him to do, what the Lord led him to do. Noah was 600 years old when the flood covered the earth. He went on board <clears throat> he went on board the boat to escape the flood. He and his wife and his sons and their wives. With them were all the various kinds of animals, those approved for eating and for sacrifice and those that were not, along with all the birds and the small animals that scurry along the ground. They entered the boat in pairs, male and female, just as God had commanded Noah. After seven days, the waters of the flood came and covered the earth. When Noah was 600 years old, on the 17th day of the second month, all the underground waters erupted from the earth, and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky. So it's coming both ways here. The rain continued to fall for 40 days and 40 nights. That very day, Noah had gone into the boat with his wife and sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. With them in the boat were pairs of every kind of animal, domestic and wild, large and small, along with birds of every kind. Two by two, they came into the boat and represented every living thing that breathes. A male and female of each kind entered, just as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord closed the door behind them. For 40 days, the floodwaters grew deeper, covering the ground and lifting the boat high above the earth. As the waters rose higher and higher above the ground, the boat floated safely on the surface. See, God took care of them, even in the midst of all this. As the water kept rising, they kept going up. There was never a fear that they were going to capsize or turn over. They weren't going to make it. God had promised, and they were faithful to follow. Finally, the water covered even the highest mountains on the earth, rising more than 22 feet above the highest mountains peaks. Imagine not seeing any mountains, not seeing any land, no peaks, nothing but water and sky. How crazy would that be? All the living things on earth died. Birds, domestic animals, wild animals, small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the people, everything that breathed and lived on dry land died. God wiped out every living thing on the earth. People, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground and all the birds of the sky, all were destroyed. The only people who survived were Noah and those with him in the boat. And the floodwaters covered the earth for 150 days. God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock with him on the boat. He sent a wind to blow across the earth and the floodwaters began to recede. The underground waters stopped flowing and the torrential rains from the sky were stopped. So the floodwaters gradually receded from the earth. Now listen, you think you're staying at home is tough? Next verse. After 150 days, 
150 days, exactly five months from the time the flood began, the boat came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Two and a half months later, as the waters continued to go down, their mount, the mountain peaks became visible. After another 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made in the boat and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood waters on the earth had dried up. He also released a dove to see the water had receded and it could find dry ground, to see if the water had receded. But the dove could find no place to land because the water still covered the ground. So it returned to the boat and Noah held out his hand and drew the dove back inside. After waiting another seven days, Noah released the dove again. This time the dove returned to him in the evening with a fresh olive leaf in its beak. Then Noah knew that the flood waters were almost gone. He waited another seven days, then released the dove again. This time it did not come back. Noah was now 601 years old. On the first day of the new year, ten and a half months after the flood began, the flood waters had almost dried up from the earth. Noah lifted back the covering of the boat and saw that the surface of the ground was drying. Two more months went by, and at last the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Leave the boat, all of you, you and your wife, and your sons and their wives. Release all the animals, the birds, the livestock, and the small animals that scurry along the ground so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. So Noah, his wife, and his sons and their wives left the boat, and all the large and small animals and birds came out of the boat, pair by pair. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and there he sacrificed as burnt offerings the animals and birds that had been approved for that purpose. And the Lord was pleased with the aroma of the sacrifice and said to himself, I will never again, I will never again curse the ground because of the human race even though everything they think or imagine is bent toward evil from childhood, I will never destroy again all living things. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. Would you pray with me? Father, we pray that during this time of reading your word, that God, you have spoken. God, I pray as we open these words and God try to glean from it and it's, Lord, application to where we are right now. I pray, God, you speak through me and in spite of me. Lord, bless all those who are watching this morning and just move in their hearts and lives, I pray, right where they are. In Jesus' name, amen. So, we see that in all of this, God has a plan. He had had enough. It was over with. But he, he said a remnant right there. I'm going to save that remnant that is trying to be in fellowship with me. That remnant that does love me. That remnant that is faithful. That remnant that does do what I command. And I'm going to spare them. So can you imagine what Noah's going through now? I mean, I've got to build this ark. I, I've never, I don't even know what this rain's going to be like. And, who knows how long that's going to be, but I'm just trusting God. Who knows how long we're going to be on there? Who knows if it's going to be smelly? Who knows if it's going to be a rough ride, if it's going to be stormy? I don't even know what this is going to be like, but I trust my Heavenly Father. We look back at uh, chapter 7, verse 5. Again, so Noah did everything the Lord commanded him. He did everything the Lord commanded him. And get this, Noah was 600 years old when the flood covered the earth. Now, can, can you just stick with me for a second and imagine, if you will, what Noah was thinking, what his wife was thinking, and what the sons were thinking, and what the daughters-in-law were thinking. What in the world? You, you're going to put me on this boat with my in-laws for all this time. Can you imagine how that must have been? You know how it is when you're packing for vacation, right? I wonder sometimes in this story if Noah's wife said, now, did you pack that? Now, you remember God told you to get that. Did you get that? Did you get that packed? I don't. How did that go? And then 
all that time back and forth. It wasn't like it was a cruise or it was this fun thing they were going on. I mean, imagine no one else in the world but you and your family will survive. What would we even do with that? Can you even fathom that? But see, Noah was faithful and following God. 40 days and 40 nights of torrential rain. 40 days and 40 nights of torrential rains. And see, in verse 11, it says, When Noah was 600 years old, the 17th day of the second month, all the underground waters erupted from the earth, and the rain fell in torrents from the sky. So they're just getting lifted. There is just water everywhere. And trust me, when we had to cancel church last year, just a little under a year ago, we saw all that rain. We saw all that flooding. How was that? That was a taste of, not even a taste actually, of what Noah experienced. Can you imagine not seeing one tree? Can you imagine not seeing one mountain? That's how it kind of feels right now. Where is home base? We have to have stickers on the floor now when we're at the grocery store or we're at Walmart or we're wherever we are. We have to stand back six feet. We have glass shields between us and the cashiers of wherever we are and buying our essential needs. That's kind of odd, isn't it? Things are different. But can you imagine if there were no one else to interact with but families? You know, it's funny. Someone shared the other day that this time of quarantine and stay at home, if you will, is not that pleasant. It's not just tea parties and, and baby dolls and having fun with little girls if you don't have little girls. If you have little boys, someone said it's like MMA all day long. It's just fight after fight and chase and stick and uh, that can be overwhelming. But think of it. Remember when you were a kid how much fun it was to get in a fight with your brother with pieces of hot wheel track? That was pretty fun because you can leave a pretty good whelp on somebody's leg with a piece of hot wheel track. If you have hot wheel track at home, don't try that at home. It's just I was an untrained professional as a child. But you, you see, we're getting all this. You know, we always say, I wish we had more time for family. I wish we had more time to just be home. And now you have it. What are you doing with it? You see, Noah and his wife and his sons and daughter-in-laws, they all had each other in their relationship with God and their trust in God, and that was it. That was it. Is it still raining? Is it still raining? Is it continuing to rain? This isn't a sprinkle. Torrents of rain is not a sprinkle. It's that thunderstorm we have seen where it's just like nothing but water, and you can just see the sheets of water coming before the storm gets to you. That's what it was. Day in, day out. Night in, night out. Water covered everything, even the highest peaks in the water covered the earth for 150 days. 150 days. Can you imagine just being in a stay-at-home order for 150 days? Can you imagine... If, if there were an order that said, go get all the groceries you can get. Oh, wait, everybody's already doing that. Sorry. But if there were an order to go get what you're supposed to get by a certain date, if there, if there were a day kind of like God said, Noah, I want you to build this ark and here's how I want it built and here's what I want it built of. And it took him some time. It didn't just take him a day. But over time, if, if we were told to gather what we needed, and there would be a period of time that we would be not outside in the yard, not in the driveway, in the house for 150 days. Whew. 
with only our family, how would that be? Just a thought. Just a thought. See, this morning I want you to get something here. God did not forget Noah. And he hasn't forgotten you. He didn't forget Noah. He was ready. He, I, I'm wiping it all out. I'm done with it. My spirit will no longer abide with these people. When he said, I will wipe out the human race, that's what he said. My spirit can't be in the midst of all this evil. It's evil everywhere. Evil thoughts, evil deeds, evil actions, evil imaginations. I was just thinking to myself, hey, what is it that's different about our world now than here? When we can have all these evil thoughts and we can watch evil things on TV, we can listen to evil music, we can look at evil on our phone. We can look at anything we want to on our phone. Perverted, pornographic, name it. Name it. You can search it. You can see it. And if you see it and you think about it, then eventually it comes and turns into action and sin. Even greater sin. We know that that's a sin. See, God remembered Noah in the midst of this mess. It was going on on the earth. He didn't forget Noah, and he's not going to forget you. He's not going to forget your family. He's not going to forget all that you have going on. He's not going to forget that you have bills to pay and you haven't been at work. He's not going to forget that you have needs that need to be attended to, and your family does, and you may not have a way to take care of them right now, but he will make a way. He will make a way. We see in verses 1 through 5 of chapter 8, but God remembered Noah. And not only did he remember Noah, God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock with him in the boat. He sent a wind to blow across the earth and the flood waters began to recede. The underground waters stopped flowing and the torrential rains from the sky were stopped. So the floodwaters gradually receded from the earth. After 150 days, exactly five months from the time the flood began, the boat came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Two and a half months later, as the waters continued to go down, other mountain peaks became visible. See, right now, it may look like you can't see out anywhere except for right in front of you. You may be looking out and going, I don't see anything. It just seems like a flood. We are covered up. I am up to here. I can hardly stand it anymore. I can hardly stand it. I can hardly see it anymore. I don't know what's out there. Is there a peak at all? Are there winds blowing at all to kind of stop this madness? Yes. God is able. See, Noah released that raven and then a dove to see if the waters were receding and if the wind was continuing to blow. He waited. And as we see, it says, After another 40 days, Noah opened the window that he had made in the boat and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood waters on the earth had dried up. He also released a dove to see if the water had receded and it could find dry ground. But the dove could find no place to land because the water still covered the earth. So it returned to the boat and Noah held out his hand and drew the dove back inside. After waiting another seven days, Noah released the dove again. This time the dove returned with a fresh olive leaf in its beak. He knew the flood waters were almost gone. But then it says in verse 12, he waited another seven days and then released the dove again. This time it did not come back. So he knew. 
You see anything right there? Seven days, he waited, sent it again. Seven days, sent it again. A week at a time. A day at a time. That's how they got through this thing. That's how they got through it was the trust and faith in God and going, okay, no matter how long it takes, I'm going to just wait a week and we'll try again. It looks like things are getting better. We'll wait a week. We'll try again. We'll look down the road, down the road, way out there later on because I know God's going to take care of us. He's going to take care of us. I mean, he's 601 years old. 601 years old. And finally, the earth was dry. Finally. Verse 15, then God said to Noah, leave the boat, all of you, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Release all the animals, the birds, the livestock, and the small animals that scurry along the ground so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. In other words, he had to wait on God. He, he could have said, hey, we're out of here. Let's all jump overboard. I barely see the top of something out there. It's starting to go down. Let's just go ahead and jump now. Let's do it now because that's what I want to do. I've had it. I can't be here anymore, God. I can't take it anymore, God. This is my time to go. I'm going to decide for myself. I'm, I'm going to go right now. Because I can't take it on here anymore. This has been a long time, a lot of water. I can't take it. Sometimes we get to that place with circumstances in our lives. But we have to wait on God. It's not easy. It's not easy. But it's in his time. It's all in his time, not ours. But we want to make it our time, right? We want to say, God, okay, I get it. I, I can see you're working here, but I can see the finish line, but I'm ready to get across there. I'm going right now. I'm going. I can't take anymore. I can't wait anymore. But if we wait on God, we wait on God, we know that he'll open the door. So Noah and his wife, verse 18, and his sons and their wives left the boat and all the large and small animals and birds came out of the boat pair by pair. They got to come out. When it was safe, Noah and his family left the boat. When it was safe, not before, not before. See, that's what happens to us. We make decisions. We say, Lord, I'm ready to go. I want to go right now. I want to take this step. It'll be a step of faith. I trust you. It's a step of faith. No, it's your own will, and you're asking God to bless it. You're saying, God, I'm going to do this on my own, but I want you to bless it. Okay. How about let's say, God, you do what you want to do and I will follow. I will stay on this boat. I will stay in this rain. I will stay in this storm. I will stay until you tell me to get out of the boat, until you tell me to leave the boat. That's what he wants us to do is be faithful, to be like Noah, to do exactly what God commands us or leads us to do. But then we see that when they left the boat, verse 20, then Noah built an altar to the Lord and there he sacrificed as burnt offerings the animals and the birds that had been approved for that purpose. And the Lord was pleased with the aroma of the sacrifice and said to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of the human race, even though everything they think or imagine is bent toward evil from childhood. I will never again destroy all living things. See, the ground was cursed because of the sin in the garden. And that's why we have to work hard to make a living. But he said, I'm never going to do that again because of what I have seen in you, Noah, because of your faithfulness. I will never again do that. You see, he was pleased with Noah's worship and Noah's family's worship. 
He was pleased with their sacrifice. That, that was a beautiful aroma, that offering. And when we worship him, when we truly give him our entire life, God, it's yours. If you take it today and use it to reach people, that's okay. If I have to go through hardship and you use that to reach people, that's okay. God, I'm giving this over to you because I want to follow you. I want to do what you are commanding me. Not what I want, but God, what you want. God, what you want. He wants us to please Him with our worship and our fellowship. Will you please Him with your worship and your fellowship? I say, but these are crazy times. This virus thing, man alive, this is crazy. Can I let you in on a little secret? This won't be the last virus you see. This won't be the last pandemic that you'll see. Pandemic, meaning that there's going to be sickness all over the world. There's going to be stuff that's going crazy in this world. There are going to be earthquakes. There are going to be wars. There are going to be rumors of wars. There are going to be storms. It's going to be wild. Because people need to come back to our God, the one true God, the one that sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you and me. And you need that relationship. You need that relationship. You see, if we have that relationship and if we read the Word and we study the Word, then we know that all these things that are happening, a lot of them are very, very tough things to have to endure. But we can endure them because of who we know. Not because of who we are, but because of who we know. We know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. You know, I know there's a lot of people that worry about uh, temperature and heat and ice and melting and all these things. But I want to share with you what the Word says. I want to share with you what the Word says. Listen, God is in control. He was in control of all the water and all the rain while Noah was on that boat with his family. He's in control right now with you and your family. If you trust Him, listen. Verse 22 says this, As long as the earth remains. Now, are you going to trust the news? Are you going to trust politics? Are you going to trust the scientists of the world and what they say we're all going to burn up? Are we going to die in a year because of this or that? Listen. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest. We're going to be able to plant and harvest. There will be cold and heat. Did you get that? There will be cold and there will be heat. There will be summer and winter. See, we're going to have summer and winter. Still yet. And day and night. Day and night. Listen, God is in control. We have to trust Him. You know, and all this fear, we get a choice. And I was so thankful a, a week or so ago to get to share with uh, some folks who attend our church, and I just love them. And they said, you know, Pastor, in this journey, we've been able to choose exactly what you said, and we're so thankful. Faith over fear. God's leading over man's. Who do you trust this morning? Would you make a decision this morning to say, God, we're going to get our family together right now, right here where we are in the living room at the kitchen table while we're watching it up on the TV or wherever you are. Just gather your family right now. Would you say, Lord, help us like Noah to trust you in the midst of the flood, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the mess. Let us trust you like never before and follow you and have fellowship with you and be faithful to you as never before. Would you do that this morning? Would you pray with me? Father, I pray that you would be with our families this morning. God, I pray that you would be with those individuals who are watching this morning, Lord, that may not know exactly what the next turn in their life is. And maybe they just happened upon this uh, live stream by accident. God, it's no accident. You speak to their heart. You move in their lives. 
God, you help them to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior today by saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. I don't know what to do, but I need a relationship with you, Lord. I need to trust your son. So let them pray a prayer much like this. Lord Jesus, I trust you. I believe that you died on a cross and rose again for my sins. I believe that's the only way I can be forgiven. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Forgive me, Jesus, and save me, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, for that family that needs to be close to you right now, you just bring whatever they need, I pray, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, would you just let us know by Facebook message, I received Christ today. I received Christ today. Let us know. We'll appreciate that and we'll get back with you and get some information to you that can help you grow in your relationship with Christ. Thank you so much. Let's praise Him right now. Let's praise Him. Jesus be known. Jesus be known. Jesus be Jesus be known, oh Jesus be known, Jesus be known, let heaven come, Jesus be known, let heaven come, King Thanks for joining us today. I hope you have a great week. And listen, I just want to say thank you to all those who help make this possible every week. We have some great volunteers and just an amazing group of people that help this continue to go on. Even though we're not together, we're together. We're together. And we look forward to seeing you and we can all worship together again right here at Cross Point Church. Join us next week as we continue our series 40. Have a great week. Be safe, everybody.